in the earlier days when trapping was uh, was our only livelihood, you might say, in Labrador, and the church or ever being one of the, the biggest and one of the most important for trapping in all Labrador, uh, well, that was fine until now this new project coming up and, and uh, to take the power out and, and dam the river up to 300 feet. Well, there'd be no river anymore. There'd be just a big lake. And I decided that Uncle John here, we talked about it, Uncle John and Blake and Uncle Mark Blake and myself, we decided we'd have to come out through there once more to see the old trapping grounds as they used to be with the cabins, well, falling in now, but everything is still there. And uh, just make one last trip out through the river before they dammed it up and, and the river would be gone. A crowd of jolly trappers, we are leaving one and all. The first hard work is started on the portage was dreadful. <coughs> and getting in <coughs> our kennels, boys, oh, it seems so fine. Going up Grand River with our pole and cracking mine. Probably three generations ago, when they, when they started the, this end of the river and worked on up through to the Church of Falls, they started uh, making their lines right from Muscard Island, which is only 12, 18 miles or something up the river here. And then uh, another one, maybe, like on the Stewart Michelin, was uh, just beyond the church on the Muscard Falls. And then uh, Uncle Charlie Groves was the next one. But uh, it wasn't, uh, maybe not, uh, those lines wasn't started one after the other. Uh, like one guy went and made his travel line, maybe the next guy went another 50 miles before he made his. He, he picked a place that he liked to look at. And then another one would do the same thing. But eventually, more trappers started looking for travel lines and they started fiddling in those spaces until the traps were or oh, maybe a quarter of a mile apart, all the ways, the whole length of the Churchill River, right on up beyond the Churchill Falls. So we start up to the high land around the 5th of September, make our trip around on up to my channel to beyond the Churchill Falls, and we get up there around 10th, 12th October, Start setting up around 50 big traps, and uh, then the other other trappers coming up not so far up there. We leave later, and, and we get a mail come up to us by November the 15th. So we'd be trapping, we'd be trapping in for a month, and uh, usually you'd have to start making your sled about that time, toboggan for the haul your fur out in the winter, and your groceries and stuff. So you just keep on trapping, make your sled and so on around, let them last normal, let it dry out a little bit and you start striking up probably around 20th of December, maybe after Christmas, depending on the, how much fur you had and how much how your groceries was hanging on. Maybe you finish striking up around New Year's, uh, New Year's Day or around that time, and then you start out to be about well, good weather, you could make it out in 18 days, but it could take maybe 20, 22 days, depending on the rough ice and other things along the valley of the river coming out, come all the way out by toboggan. Snorshers, you know, walk out 18, 20, 22 days, get out around late January, and then you rest up probably, oh, two or three weeks, or maybe a month even. Leave again in February, late February maybe. Go back up, not that far. That'd be too far to go back for another trip. You go. Well, I used to always go back up with Uncle John up here at Slackwater. That's about 80 miles up on the river, I think. And I trapped my second hunt there with Uncle John until early April. Come home and that'd be that'd be it. And around 5th of April, you get home. Last trip. That'd finish the season for trapping, you know.
I mean, the bad rap is already had to help one another take care of the sweet rapids, you see? There's a bowline and, and a pole to keep away from the rock. It wasn't too bad after you knew what to do. Not too many fellers made a mistake. I mean, the chance one to tip her over or something. But the most always, when he was in there, kind of a bad place, he'd always loosen it, you see? Take away half of her stuff, carry it. Carry the board of rocks. There's only a couple of rabbits we had to loosen it, you know, the rest of them can take her suit. It's everything. <coughs> Go on and name it, you have to use that loosen it. <coughs> take with a couple of eggs of flour and another load or two, maybe. Two of stuff like that. Anything that was going to be wet, you see? So I would carry that. Because you didn't want to lose your stuff after you get up that far in the country. They was coming in here to try to go in. Anyhow, yeah, well, they thought they should take her up with the bowline and pole, what we call the bowline and pole, you see. They have to put the line under the nose of the kennel and tie the pole on for the goiter. But they, they didn't do that way. They, they left the track line back to where we are with track. That's about four feet back from the nose. So he ch didn't change the line and they made a mistake there, I guess. Because when, as soon as they took the toy, she shot out and they couldn't hold her. She shot out and threw it around and right out in the river, you see. So then we jumped in our work and cut the line, went out and pulled up on the line and he was already gone. He went around and couldn't get him, but never did find a body. They never did find him a body of anybody that ever drowned in this river yet, that I know about. My father was a trapper, and my grandfather was a trapper, and there was no other way here to make money, so you had to just go out trapping or starve. So when I was 14, father told me I better go up for a lesson. We used to go up together in the fall first, but I got older. So he, went, he took me up at 14 years old when I left here. So that was, I, I trapped all that for my father, you know. But uh, after I got up there for one year, and the next year, he told me I had to go for myself. So, no, I was in there. <laughs> I was only about 15 or four. So, okay. He said he'd give me the soul's bath and I could trap in there. So, okay. So, I went in. He, he told me I had to do it all myself. So, I went in. I went in, and I never had a night by myself before, you know? I mean, by myself, I was just father. And I was half scared, I didn't know what, but <laughs> I was scared. So I got, I went, oh, crack right on that day and got into the second house. <coughs> and that's where my, I had a tent there. I had a tilt outside, but I had a tent. So <coughs> I said to myself, well, this is it, I gotta have a night by myself. No, 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 maybe at all, that was it. <coughs> so I decided, Cut up my wood and got everything ready for the night. Had the uh, porridge for supper, put them on the stove. And uh, thinking about the getting dark sun and, you know, thinking about <laughs> I, I was really scared, that's true. 
for the first night, you know. So after a while, I got in ready and called in tent anyway. Got water and wood. Called in tent. And then uh, after it comes to get dark, I come to feel better, you know, more, more content or something. I don't know what. And after it got right dark and I had something to eat my supper and. I laid back and I fell to sleep and I never worried no more about it after, about sleeping by your own self. But I was really scared. A is for Elvin in the woods he do sing, and B is for Bobby who hunts near the spring. C is for Charlie who hunts Parky Pine, and D is for Donald, he's home all the time. E is for Ellis, who works in the barn, and F is for Frank, who can spin a good yarn. And G stands for Goat, who hunts Kinamu, and H is for Henry, he hunts in there too. I is for Isaac, who hunts on the shares, and J is for Judson, who gives him the gears. And K is for Keats, the boss of our store, and L is for Levi, he hunts along the shore. M is for Murdoch, who works day and night, and N is for Nath, he hunts gutters by. O is for Oswell, who hunts down the bay, and P is for Percy, he's only halfway. Q is for Quirm, in the church he do sing, and R is for Edgy, he lives like a king. S is for Sid, who hunts in the fall, and T is for Timony, he looks after us all. You might try to get off just before daylight on a long day, and that day you'd, uh, you'd go from one trap to the other, check it. If there's a squirrel or something in it or too much ice and snow on it, you'd take it off, strike the trap, and s and loosen it up, take the ice off and so on, reset it. And that take about 10 minutes each trap, 20 minutes or so maybe, and uh, to reset each trap. And you got maybe 18 or 20 traps to, to check for one day, eh? And uh, usually you, you got the one certain place to have your lunch because animals, don't, wild animals, don't care too much about smoke, you know? So if you're gonna have lunch and play it all along your line, it's gonna be, it's better to keep it in one area, like between two traps somewhere. So usually you go on, take off in the morning, you go to this certain lunch place and you'd stop there and uh, fix up your fire place and boil your kid and have it. Just a cup of tea and some of this trapper bread we make with the, just made of bacon powder and salt and some flour. You saw how we done it there in the camp. And uh, have a little bit of bread and, and uh, a cup of tea and take off again. You go on to the end of that line and come back. Maybe if you got time, you have another quick cup of tea right there in that same fireplace. And you get back home probably sunset or dark. And then maybe you had to cut wood for the night and maybe you got enough cut. Usually you got a pretty good stock of wood on hand, you know. But if you had to, you'd uh, end up cutting your wood for the night just after dark. In the meantime, you got your partridge, your rabbit, or whatever you're having for supper on the stove, cooking. Time you get your wood finished for the night and uh, to take care for your dog, feed, uh, feed it. And, uh, you know, most drivers had one dog, eh? Husky dog, you know, to haul you, help haul the sled. So you see to that and uh, give it his supper, bed down, and and uh, get your water for the night if you had to, and then you'd come in and supper if you're just about ready. You get your fur out if you had a couple of minks or fox or something that day, it was froze. Sometimes your your traps is left uh, on each line maybe eight or ten days before you get around, eh? So fur could be dead and froze in that time, so you take your fur and hang it up in, in the town like this, just hang it up there somewhere and let it saw out. Time you finish your supper, and bakes your bread for the next day, your fur is ready to work at, so you work at that then until maybe midnight, and you have another quick cup of tea and turn it in the bunk. Go to bed, get ready for the next morning.
the old together next bird and stay away. But uh, I know some guys were not really in love with it like some others, and, and they didn't. As soon as they got a chance, as soon as others were coming to Labrador, they were anxious to take it. But uh, not, it wasn't ever lonely for me. I, I loved the work, and uh, uh, well, as far as hard work goes, physically it is hard, but uh, it never bothered me, the hard work part of it. You, you don't have, uh, one thing, you don't have time to be lonely because like I say, you get out in the morning getting daylight and you're on your line all day and your back getting dark and you got to do your chores around the camp besides putting away the fur you had that day. And by the time it's all finished, you're ready to hit the sack. And you're just asleep until breakfast in the morning and you're off again. And uh, it was never lonely, never. I don't, I, I think, uh, I could say, I think 90% of all travelers would never say it was lonely. And then they, would, they wouldn't mind the hard work. It's hard work, but uh, it's a good work, you know. Fresh air, lots of good meat and fish and everything to eat. For three months, you got to take uh, quite a lot of goats, you see. About 300 pounds of rubber. That's uh, 200 pounds of rubber. A barrel, 196 pounds, I believe. And uh, so much rice, about 10 pounds of rice, I guess. Could be 8 pounds of raisins, sugar, 24 pounds, 20 pounds. And milk, so much milk. And so much everything, you know, what you need. And you trust the meat to the country for meat, fresh meat and all stuff like that. You kill all the parties you want, and rabbits most always, porcupines, beaver meat, caribou once in a while. But there never used to be very many caribou when I was growing up. <coughs> but after I got up, I guess about 30, 30 years old, there was quite a few caribou coming on then. <coughs> so I used, to, I used to kill, one fall I killed uh, two, two caribou, that was for three of us, you know. We shared with the other trappers, you know. But, uh, so the Mr. Neve was next to for above me. So I'll give me all the meat he wanted. And Horace Cody, he was there too. So I'll give me all he wanted. Well, whatever you kill, I'm in the shade between the three of us, you know. We all do together. Foxes, martins, minks, 
otter, beaver, and all those, they were the most uh, valuable furs, but you get muskrat and weasel and the little ones uh, wasn't worth so much. And uh, so, anyway, you, you, you can't say exactly what was the easiest to catch. Some kinds were easier to catch than others, but you take, in some areas, the other kind might be easier to catch than the other one. Like, you take, for instance, on the Churchill River Valley, but there was nothing easier to get than a fox. If a fox comes to the valley, the Churchill River, he got in the first trap he comes to. And you take Kinnamal River down here a little bit south of us, you couldn't hardly catch a fox at all. If there was hundreds, you, you, they just wouldn't take the bait. They, you couldn't get them. But I think uh, to, to uh, say the hardest of all, if you if they know a trap, if you a beaver, if you if you take off a toenail or a foot off of a beaver, it's almost impossible to get them after. I I know for a fact I've seen it proved that a beaver can take a, a, a could take a cut a little stick off so big and it worked so long and take it in his paw like a hand and put it on the tongue of the trap and strike it up. I know that for sure. To be a, a good river man, well, you, you had to be uh, healthy, one thing for sure, because it's very hard work. You know, pouring the kennel, carrying your groceries over the portages, carrying your kennel, the whole work, everything. You have to be healthy. I, I can remember a few people in my day that was not healthy, and they didn't have to be very old. And I think it was for that reason. And the other thing, you have to allow your work, and you have to be, you have to, Trap is a very complicated thing, you know. You, there's so many little odds and ends to go into it, to, it, to, make, uh, to make it like a, you might say, a trade. You, you, there's so many different things to learn. A good hunter, a good trapper can, can leave his, his camp in the evening when he's camping after dark and go back in the woods where you can't see. You, you don't have no flashlights or nothing like this. We didn't used to have any. You go back from your camp to cut your, your, your firewood for the night for your stove. And you have to be able to, to chip a piece off of a stick. You can't see, a, to look at the stick, you can't see if it's green or dry. Well, the, the wood got to be dry for those little stoves. They want burn green wood. So you had to know enough about it to chip a piece of wood off and smell it in the dark. And you can tell by the smell if it's dry or green. You could go to the Hudson Bay Company every fall and get, uh, they'd, they'd fetch you out. If you never had a cent, they'd fetch you out to go into your trapping line and, and do your trapping. But that, that way, they got your fur, definitely. You know, that, that, is, that was one bad thing, too. But in another way, it was good for us because they'd fed us out. We'd go in and, and have our winter's hunt and come out and sell the fur to the bay, Hudson Bay, and square our bell, and maybe not even square it if we didn't have a good year. And then, like that, you know, you could never get ahead, see? And uh, then when the, when the base started in 1941, I think it was, uh, well, that was when the trap was starting to die out because work was easy to get and good money, and the people was making good money, and, and uh, naturally they, they took it because they were, they were getting ahead. They, they all started building nice homes and, and putting a few dollars in the bank and uh, getting ahead, you know? And, and so the trap had died out all together. You go in the woods for three months, maybe. You get back all your friends and be awful glad to see you because they'd be a long time. They wouldn't hear from you even. But I think everybody was pro to have trappers, you know. I'd do it all over again if I had to, you know, for the young was able to. I'd enjoy something that I enjoyed doing, you know. It's better than working. You're working. You're a free man, really, when you're a trapper. But you don't have no boss. You've got to do it your own way. There was the food of younger, younger ones growing up that couldn't make it quite into a living as the older ones, you know. <clears throat> for them pretty hard, I guess, and lonely, everything together. But for all the old fellas at uh, my age fellas, you started off with the old people and 
knew what to do to make a living. Or, so we got old enough to take over ourselves, that's what we did, you see. And <clears throat> you could always make a pretty good living that way. I never ever wanted to, I enjoyed it. <laughs> 